Why don't we start? It's already four o'clock. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the investor call of Ocard Limited to discuss the key developments of the company. We have with us Chairman Dr. Habil Kurakiwala and Managing Director Dr. Murtaza Kurakiwala. I hand over to Dr. Habil Kurakiwala for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. So you're uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. It is after a while that we are having an investors conference uh, and we hope that we will maintain this communication with you on a regular basis this communication today in a way would be different than the normal investors communication because what we would really want to share with you today is that Vokart is in the cusp of significant changes. And what I want you to know, what is this significant turnaround situation we expect in next 12 to 24 months? Our managing director, Dr. Murtuza Khorakila, will elaborate specifically on these major achievement, accomplishment, and the changes which will take place, and focus on major milestones we have achieved in recent past, in last 12 months. Over to you, Murtaza. Thank you, uh, Chairman, and a very warm uh, welcome to the investor community. Uh, and very happy to be here and share with you uh, some of the changes that and the transformation that is uh, undergoing in our organization and how we intend over the next 12 to 24 months uh, take that forward. The first slide is just a snapshot of the organization in the nine months uh, in terms of our financials, revenue and EBITDA and debt. And uh, moving on, uh, this gives you a sense of the organizational structure. Uh, slide four, a global fo footprint of the organization where we are present outside India in various market. And uh, it contributes about 75% of our business outside India, 25% is in India. And we are present in various segments like generates, branded, biotechnology, injectables, and antibiotic discovery, I will share with you a little bit more as we go along into the new developments that have taken place in our business and the promising uh, growth opportunities that are there. Going on to the next slide, uh, the key highlights I would like to uh, share with you is on our performance that in the last uh, year. Uh, what is the entire restructuring that we have done of the U.S. business? Uh, and a great opportunity is in terms of the agreement that we have with uh, CIRA in terms of vaccine manufacturing in U.K. and what that may uh, unfold in the coming year. And obviously an update and progress into very significant uh, progress we have made in our novel antibiotic uh, portfolio. Next slide. We have been mentioning in over the last one year that the U.S. business needs to get significantly restructured. And uh, as it was having a significant amount of drain into the financial performance of the company, we have shut down our manufacturing facility at Morton Grove near Chicago. 
And using a simple 80-20 formula, we have identified the product portfolio uh, to be manufactured uh, by a third party. Uh, and that will be an ongoing continuing business that we will have. As a result of the entire restructuring of the manufacturing, uh, we intend to save about $12 million uh, in losses, which we are currently incurring. And however, we will continue to maintain our sale in the U.S. business as these products will be manufactured from a third-party certified uh, facility with approximately 40% gross margin. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, we have recently concluded an agreement with Serum Institute for Manufacturing Vaccine in a UK facility earlier this year. And as a result of that, we have received 10 million uh, pounds as a contribution for reserving manufacturing facility for 150 million doses per year of vaccine for 15 years. Uh, this is uh, 150 million doses per year for about 15 year agreement. And in addition to a contract manufacturing, there is a joint venture component uh, in the agreement uh, where there is a profit share of 51%, 49% in favor of Wuhan. Uh, today, CVM has identified two vaccines and we plan to manufacture these products within the next 12 months after exhibit batches and regulatory approval is received. We have been uh, significantly committed to our presence in antibiotic over the last 20 years and are probably the only company in the world to have a very comprehensive end-to-end uh, -end drug discovery and development program in antibiotics. As you already know, we have about six QIDP grants from the US FDA. And this means that there is an unmet medical need identified by US FDA and being satisfied by our product profile and therefore they have given us a QIDP approval which will allow for faster clinical trial and approval of the products. I share with you a pipeline of the presence of uh, Wokart with five products in the development pipeline, vis-a-vis -vis other entities and other corporations who have between one to two. And this just goes to show the strength of the portfolio that has emerged out of our dedicated commitment in research over the last 20 years, positioning us in a very good position as far as antibiotic innovative portfolio is concerned. We have achieved a success in licensing one of our molecules uh, to for China, uh, which you are aware is a licensing deal for China with Gemincare 0873. We have received a milestone uh, payment from Gemincare. As far as our India approval of phase three, we are marketing two products, Mbroc and Mbroc O in India, and we are also filed for approval in various emerging market and expect to receive approval in eight emerging markets in the next six to nine months. In India, over the last two years that it has been present, 30,000 patients have used MROC and benefited from it. Additionally, our phase three clinical trial uh, 44873 is going to be concluded in the Indian market sometime in 2024. Let me tell you a little bit about our flagship program that is uh, WCK5222. And there have been a couple of significant uh, milestones and developments uh, in this regard. First, there is an increase in the resistance. A new report by CDC in the US hospitals concluded that the resistance to infection on which 5222 works has increased somewhere between 30 to 80 percent because of two years of COVID-19. This further enhances the potential and makes 5222 even more relevant as a life-saving medicine. 
our global phase three trial, which commenced in August 2022, uh, is progressing well. And we intend to complete this trial over the next 15 to 18 months uh, and seek approval in markets globally in the US, Europe, China, India, and be in the markets sometime in 2025. You will be happy and proud to know as an investor in Bokart that your company has the innovative 5222 product already saved three lives of patients in India, even before it is approved and undergoing phase three trials. A 50 year old fe uh, female patient in Vedanta Hospital who had abdominal sepsis, an 11 year old boy in a global hospital in Chennai who had a bone marrow transplant and an 18 year old boy admitted in AIG hospital Hyderabad with acute leukemia. 5222 was used on a compassionate basis for saving the lives of these three people when all other medicines that were used by the doctors could not work. It is indeed extremely fulfilling and proud moment for Wokhart and for all Indians. And these were the critical patients who were on ventilators for several weeks. They were cured and discharged from the hospital on completing treatment in 10 days with WCK 5222. And this is indeed a beta lactam enhancer and is a new class of antibiotic and therefore it works so dramatically and with a very superior clinical benefit. Additionally, you will be happy to know that we have established a collaboration with the National Institute of Health in the US with one of our other lead molecules, uh, 677, and they are conducting a human phase one clinical trial of MDR gram-negative antibiotic uh, targeted for ambulatory settings. This vindicates NIH confidence in the novel once a day, much needed, outpatient parenteral antimicrobial therapy for MDR infections in an ambulatory setting. These developments uh, of the organization over the last 12 months provides a glimpse of the future of your company. It is like an iceberg which you see and are able to see a very small portion, but there is so much underlying strength and opportunities unseen and invisible today. I'm not getting into all the financials, which have already been published, and I'm sure most of you have seen them. However, I would like to highlight a few important and significant aspects. One of the objectives which we had was in terms of deleveraging our organization. Our long-term debt, external debt over the last five years has gone down from 3,200 crores to about 600 crores. And in terms of our external debt to equity has gone down from 0.96 to 0.16. Uh, in parallel, while we have deleveraged the organization, a promoter commitment has increased and it has improved from 208 crores to 700 crores and which could be considered as a quasi equity. And in addition to the outstanding 700 crore loan, another 500 crore of promoter loan 
has been converted into equity and we have received an additional 250 crores from investor in the successful rights issue. Coming to some of the operational uh, parameters, our sales has shown in the current year a quarter-on-quarter increase in growth from 578 to 699 crores, representing a growth of about 20% in quarter three over quarter one. Our EBITDA also shows a steady improvement and has moved in the positive territory. And for the last two quarters is positive with 39 pro and 59 pro EBITDA. Our cash flow position shows that our operating cash flow in the quarter three was a positive 95 crores. And this helped in deleveraging the organization by reducing debt by about 109 crores. And additionally, the promoters infused another 71 crores in terms of a cash flow, which helped in taking care of the investments that we are making in our R&D and NC portfolio. And therefore, if you see right from the beginning, our opening balance, which is 221 crore, remains at about 217 crores for the end of the quarter. Let me come to the highlights of some of the individual businesses and their performance in the current year. Our UK business, without the vaccine, uh, has moved up in terms of its growth from uh, 208 crores last quarter, last year, to 223 crores, showing a handsome increase in the turnover, as well as an increase in the market share in the covered market by more than 1%. We have accelerated also our focus in developing and filing new products. And as you would see, since 2020, in a combined way, we have filed more than 23 products and another 24 products to be filed in 23 and 24. Our India business continues to perform well with a focus on diabetes and MROC and uh, a pain management portfolio. On a nine-month basis, our diabetes business has grown by more than 20%. And on a quarter-to-quarter basis, from quarter two financial year 23 to quarter three, there is a growth from 150 to 175 crores. And on nine-monthly basis, from 450 to 483 crores. And we are one of the few companies in India that has a complete integrated portfolio of diabetes products, uh, including insulins, glargines, uh, and fully integrated right from R&D to manufacturing to commercialization. Emerging market business has also shown an improvement and a growth in quarter three compared to the earlier quarters at one and stands at 148 crores compared to 117 crores. Our distribution in these markets is keen, key, among them the key markets or the key regions where we are present is Latin America, Asia, and Russia CIS. And going forward, uh, MENA will become also a very important market in terms of our growth. Having given you an update on the various businesses and their performance, let me share with you a little bit about how we see the various drivers of growth 
driving growth for the organization in the years to come. And as, as you are aware, fundamentally we are focused in four areas which we call as the strategic pillars of growth. First is the mainstay pharma business, which is there in India, UK, Ireland, US and emerging markets. Second is the vaccine opportunity, which we realized from our collaboration with UK government and now an ongoing uh, collaboration with Serum for manufacturing these vaccines in UK and the supplying globally. Third, very importantly, is our presence in the biological space in diabetes, where we have the entire injectable insulin portfolio. We have marketed two products and additional products are under development. And we have introduced in India and various emerging markets and intend to expand this uh, opportunity in terms of markets and products. And overall, this uh, targets a diabetes biological market of about $50 billion. And lastly, but not the least, is our foray and presence and deep commitment in this R&D space of new drug discovery, uh, which I mentioned to you a brief while back. And if we see what are these growth drivers, how they will unlock value and performance in the organization going forward, I see in the first two years, that is in a one or two year time frame, we will have these diabetes, uh, insulin, glargine and various molecules in emerging market uh, driving a large uh, percentage of the growth. Our collaboration for vaccines with uh, Serum, which is there and which we have signed, will deliver uh, growth in the year. And as an organization, I think our fundamental focus is on improving profitability and cash flow. And I think all aspect of the operation is something we are looking at. And we have been focused on it in the last year or so. And we'll continue that focus in the years to come is on improving our profitability and cash flow. Going forward in a two to three year time frame, our novel drug discovery portfolio, which we have launched in India and some other new products which are coming, will also be help in driving uh, some of the uh, growth of the organization. <clears throat> Let me elaborate a little bit on the growth drivers and what is it that is, uh, how it will drive the growth. I think we are in the insulin and glargine space in India and emerging markets, which is corresponding about one and a half billion dollars in terms of the covered market. Our current uh, presence in this space is about 50 million dollars and therefore there's great opportunity from us for us to increase our market share. We are registered in uh, more than 25 markets and a large number of new markets we have filed and we have approvals in the last year and in the uh, coming year, and therefore it will accelerate our presence with new market launches. It is a limited competition and therefore has the ability to create and develop a sustainable competitive advantage. And I will share that with you in a while as to why this can be a sustain sustainable uh, competitive advantage. We are fully integrated in terms of our manufacturing, right, from API to formulation to having our own devices uh, and our own pen. We believe that being integrated right from beginning to ending with R&D, with manufacturing, with regulatory, with pen devices and having our own IP and commercial organization and having an end-to-end -end kind of a value chain it provides us a very sustainable competitive advantage in terms of cost, in terms of value creation, in terms of uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, integration of all effort and uh, execution and operational excellence. In addition to the existing products, we also have a pipeline of new products, uh, including Aspart and various other analogs, which are in the development pipeline.
I touched upon this earlier, but our collaboration with the vaccine, uh, with CVAM, is for 150 million doses per year. It is a multi-vaccine arrangement, including COVID, and it is a long-term 15-year profit-sharing arrangement in addition to the uh, CMO uh, arrangement, which is there. I had uh, mentioned about COVID and it is its impact on increased opportunity for 5222. And you would be surprised to know that COVID-19 in the two years that it was a pandemic uh, resulted in the loss of 5 million lives. And the superbugs, which we call as the resistant uh, organisms, which are resistant to current infections and uh, current uh, antibiotics, sorry, uh, result in the loss of life of 5 million people every year. And that is an astounding fact when one looks at it in the context of the pandemic. And almost it is like a silent killer. This is our overall portfolio of products that we have in antibiotic space. And we cover from gram negative to gram positive from uh, as a first line therapy to a uh, life saving uh, product, the entire spectrum of products uh, covering different indications and there are different stages of clinical development. Some are all, uh, in, in, launched in India, filed in emerging markets and Two of them, 5222 and 4873, are undergoing phase three clinical trials. <clears throat> so let me final, finally conclude uh, my communication and share with you from uh, where I covered what are some of the significant milestones we have accomplished in the last uh, one year. What is the financial performance of the company in the, in the last year? What is broadly the strategy and the growth drivers that we are looking at? And now specifically, what are the specific milestones which we are focused on in terms of delivering these in the years 24 and 25? And these are we will get approval of uh, Glargine in some of the key Latin markets like uh, Mexico, uh, Brazil, and in MENA. We are going to file our ASPART in India. We will get approval of MROC and MROCO in the emerging markets. We will complete our phase three clinical trial in India in 2024 and file for approval. We will complete significant part of the phase three clinical trial of I222, which is being conducted globally, and will be filing for approval in uh, 2025. We will initiate our business through the collaboration with Serum and manufacturing in UK. Uh, our business of the U.S. business has already moved and restructured to a third party. And we will initiate uh, product supply from these uh, third party shifted products. We are targeting new product launches in India, as well as in various other markets. Uh, 14 launches in India and 25 launches in UK in 24-25 combined. In 2025, we will launch ASPART and 4873 in India. And by then, our U.S. business, which has been a drain on the profitability and cash flows, will turn profitable definitely. And as an organization, we are working towards clearly being PBT positive in two years' time. I think this was a brief communication we wanted to share with you that encapsulates, as Chairman said, 
some of the very important and key milestones, but more importantly, the key areas we have focused on in terms of delivering a better performance and improved financial health in terms of our profitability and cash flows. Now, thank you for being with us and uh, uh, partaking in this uh, presentation communication. And I would leave the floor open now to any uh, questions that you may have. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa. I request our investors to please take to the chat box or the Q&A box to ask any, any questions that you may have. And we will uh, read out your questions and take them accordingly in a systematic manner. We will give it a few seconds before our investors type their questions in the chat box. Our first question is from the likes of Kishore Agarwal. Can you briefly help us understand what will be what will be the total cost yet to be incurred in respect of WCK 5222 and how does the company plan to fund it? So over to you. Yeah. I think uh, we are already initiated phase three and we intend to uh, complete in next 12 to 15 months. Uh, and the additional investment required for CUTI clinical trial will be about $30 million. And uh, we intend to not take out uh, cash flow from our operation. We are looking at alternate uh, funding. Uh, debt funding and some monetization of assets which are not in use. So that's how uh, we intend to fund balance of 5222 uh, clinical trial. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Mr. Harish G. What's the revenue growth expected in FI24 and the cash EBITDA in FI24? Murtaza, would you like to respond? Uh, while we don't give any future guidance, but I must say that I've been fairly heartened by our performance in the last nine months. And the uh, growth momentum that we have got in terms of our profitability, and we have initiated various measures, uh, not only on a top-line growth, but I think what our focus is on driving profitability. And what we have looked at is all aspects of the business. We have looked at product-wise profitability. Uh, we have looked at cost management uh, aspects within the organization and working capital. So I am uh, very positive that we will maintain the growth momentum that we have got in this year. And it will only accelerate in the coming years. Uh, as I mentioned, in terms of the various growth drivers we have, we are having new launches of our diabetes portfolio, insulin and glargin in various emerging markets like in MENA, in Mexico, in uh, Brazil, in uh, various other Middle East markets. Our uh, new filings in the UK uh, is on a good path. We have had 12 filings in the last year and another 25 filings we'll have in the next two years. Uh, so I feel all aspects of businesses are on a right track. We are growing well. U.S. business, which was a drain, uh, we have restructured it. And as a result of that, it would uh, bring about a saving in terms of our bottom line uh, because the saving of $12 million that we hope to realize, uh, part of it has been realized in this year. Significant amount would be realized in the coming year. So all this put together, I think we would see significantly better numbers uh, in the next year. And then we will turn completely PBT positive in the year 2000 and two years from now. Thank you, Dr. Murtaza. The next question is, what is the latest status for WCK5222 trials and how many patients have enrolled for the same? As we already mentioned that uh, WCK5222 phase three clinical trial is on. Uh, this is, uh, we have enrolled patient in Europe. 
and very soon we will enroll patient in india us and china and uh, about uh, 20% of the patient has been already completed the clinical trial and uh, as i mentioned in next 15 18 months we should be completing the clinical trial on five people thank you sir the next question is what will be the peak revenue from vaccine business related to serum see as per our agreement and serum's understanding that uh, we have reserved 150 million doses capacity uh, obviously there are two aspects of income coming out of it one is we will receive a normal manufacturing cost of making those vaccine as we were receiving earlier from the uk government additionally depending on the price at which serum will sell after their marketing cost of 8 to 10% uh we would be sharing in the profit so obviously per dose there is a sick, uh, double uh, value creation one is a manufacturing link another is a link and we expect serum uh that is what they have said that they are starting with two vaccine in, within next few months after our agreement and i am sure as we go along they will receive more license and they will utilize our capacity and i think it will be a game changer for us in a sense in terms of value creation and profitability over next several years and it would be a very sustained uh, increasing business year after year thank you sir we go to the next question what is your expected r&d spread over the next 2 to 3 years and how do you intend to fund it also if you could share how much you intend to spend for biosimilars and an nce our r&d funding if you have observed that we have maintained certain percentage on our revenue of the sale but within the r&d the mix has shifted away from pharmaceutical r&d to drug discovery and biological r&d so our major part of our spend comes out of uh biological and drug discovery r&d and we intend overall to maintain 8 to 9% of our revenue for r&d thank you sir the next question is what is the status of your us fda on our current plans see all of us in the industry knows that uh, us uh, business has become quite challenging for variety of reason and uh, as a result of this we have restric- uh, restructured our uh, manufacturing at mgp level we have also are revisiting our india business from india to us and currently our focus primarily is on the third party manufactured product to sell in usa and uh, probably we will take uh, a new course of position of exactly how we want to deal with our us opportunities and the business in the coming year and we run, we will have once our plan ready we will be happy to share that with you thank you sir we go to the next question how will the product mix change in the next 2 to 3 years from current levels motuza would you like to respond yeah i as i was mentioning our focus on biologicals and uh, biosimilar is only going to uh, grow and expand its uh, presence as a part of the overall business so currently biologics uh, contribute about 20% of the revenue of the whole uh, revenue of the organization it will grow at a much faster rate than the uh, generic business and uh, i expect that in the next 2 to 3 years its contribution to wokart business will improve from 20% to 30% uh, primarily driven by the 
uh, launches of the products in various emerging markets and the new products that we are developing that will come to the market in a medium term uh, of time. But the existing products and the launches in new market increase in the market share that we have, all that would drive uh, a growth of biologic. So I think that is one aspect of product mix. Second is, I think, as an innovative portfolio, an NC portfolio, uh, which is approved in India and we launch in various emerging markets, as that comes into play, that part of the business and portfolio will also increase. But in the first uh, two to three years, I see diabetes, uh, the biologics part of it, having a very significant impact. Thank you, Dr. Murtata. The next question is, is it possible to share the centers in India where the trial of 5222 is being conducted? Uh, we have not yet started uh, pay, uh, in India, the 5222. It is now mainly in Europe. But I think next few months, uh, we will initiate this uh, in Indian centers also. And uh, we will let you, I think it will be available in the, our website. Uh, whenever we initiate uh, trial in uh, India. But it, currently, it is not yet uh, started. Thank you, sir. The next question is, is there any plan to out-license AMR mo- molecules and any plans to monetize WCK5222? See, we basically have to one way or the other monetize our uh, 5222 uh, uh, and there are two aspects of it because 5222 we are, are conducting global clinical trials and we do not have presence in many markets in the world so that is where we will have to monetize we are also looking at an option of globally to monetize uh, the product and i think these are the we are evaluating the value proposition uh, which is available, which is possible for us. And that is also an option on the table very much. And we will take a call at the right time after the phase three clinical trial is over. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Uh, the next question is, could you share broad monetization potential for WCK5222 for the company? I think you put a number at this stage is a little too early. I think we'll have to wait for a while and then make a proper assessment. But I think it will be a fairly significant number. Sure, sir. Uh, we go to the next question. What are your thoughts on biosimilar business? The market is already competitive with multiple players in the EMs, in the AM area. What are your thoughts on pricing, etc.? Murtaza, would you like to take this book? Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in my uh, communication, there are three or four important aspects of our presence in uh, emerging markets and India in a biosimilar space. And the components of that strategy are the following. One is we are fully integrated player in a biosimilar space. Uh, right from R&D to manufacturing to commercialization. And there are not too many players in the world who have that complete integrated play. And that provides us the cost competitive advantage, sustainability advantage, and deep commitment of the organization in a biosimilar space. It is not, uh, it's not a space where you have 15 players and 20 players. It's a space where you will have four, five players, uh, which are present. as they this, are, uh, this is very true for a diabetic portfolio. If you look at other biological products, the competitive scenario is much larger. Many more players are there. But when you look from a diabetic portfolio of insulin, Glarge, Naspart, uh, it's uh, quite limited and there are only half a dozen players in worldwide. Murtuza, you continue. Yeah, and in addition to the technology aspect in uh, uh, diabetes biosimilar, I think the fact that one has to put up very specialized uh, manufacturing facilities 
uh, API as well as formulation and the kind of investment required and the time that is required to put up the entire facility, get regulatory approval, uh, takes a long period of time. So I, I feel that, in fact, we are in a very sweet spot as far as our diabetes injectable portfolio is concerned. And we will be looking at very uh, significantly unlocking uh, potential in the market. And we are very well positioned over here. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. The next question is... Let me proceed... Let me proceed to space. Let me proceed to phase three directly without phase two. I could not find any details on phase two study. I assume that it's allowed to do phase three without phase two. Is it based on certain factors related to WCK 5222, which gives us confidence that it will be successful, possibly, without the need of phase two? See, this is, a pro, you know, the, this whole program was shared by us to U.S. regulators, EMEA regulator, Chinese regulator, and even Indian regulators. And the data which we able to produce on a preclinical and phase one data, they were so strong in terms of safety profile because phase two generally you do for effic- uh, safety to a large extent and efficacy also, but phase three is fundamentally both safety and efficacy. So looking at the data and also the fa- very fact that needs are there, and the safety profile was excellent both in terms of preclinical phase one, clinical also with the various organs like heart, lung, liver, kidney. So we did a safety profile and all the organs and the data in terms of safety was outstanding actually. And therefore the regulator have made an exception and granted us a straight phase three. The second equally important aspect is uh, it, Cefipime is an already an approved drug. Zidabactam is a new discovery molecule by Vokart. And as a result of that, uh, they collectively overall, they felt that we can straight away move into phase three. Even if you have noticed in phase three, they have asked us to do one arm study only. Normally for a new molecule, it is required two arm study to establish. So all these advantages we got mainly because of the preclinical data and phase one safety data. In addition, the unmet need. And we have already seen with the compassionate use which have taken place in India. So even though our clinical trial is for CUTI, all these products were used, which we would be taking a uh, HEPFEP study that is uh, ventilator uh, study when person is on ventilator. But all the patient where compassionate use was done, there were cases of uh, lung infection. Uh, some of the uh, organism which we are talking of pseudomonas and acinobacter, they were involved. And they recovered like magic. Okay, on third day, they were in one case, ventilator was off. In all cases, a therapy on completion there was a complete remission of all the resistant organisms. Thank you, sir. The next question is, on the serum deal of 150 million doses per annum, has serum guaranteed you minimum doses? And what should be the pricing? Also, what kind of overall margins can we see in this business? See, this is a deal which we have, and there is a certain minimum quantity which is guaranteed after initial uh, phase. Uh, That is one. Second, we expect significantly more margin per dose of vaccine compared to what we did 
for COVID-19 vaccines with the UK government because uh, what is profitable, uh, we'll get our manufacturing costs. Additional, there is a profit sharing. Thank you, sir. The next question is, how much revenue from MROC and MROC O sales uh, are did we report in nine months FI23? And what are the revenue prospects going forward? Uh, so in the last uh, few years since we had launched, uh, we have been clocking upwards of uh, 30 crores uh, in a financial year. And uh, if you look at in terms of the number of patients who have benefited from MBOC, uh, we have served uh, 30,000 patients since its launch. Uh, it has also been used in various cases of COVID uh, where patients had pneumonia and they developed uh, resistant infections like MRSA infections. Uh, and in fact, some of the doctors uh, even mentioned to us that it was useful to have MBOC launched right during COVID time because it helped them in dealing with some of the pulmonary and lung infections uh, more adequately. Uh, the clinical performance of the product has been remarkable in uh, India and there has been a very positive uh, uh, appreciation and uh, also adoption of the product from a clinical point of view. Uh, and we have, as I said earlier, we have filed in various emerging markets and we expect to get approval in about eight emerging markets in the current year. And we will expand that uh, activity to a larger number of emerging markets uh, in the in the following year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murtaza. The next question is, could you please benchmark efficacy of WCK5222 versus other antibiotics recently approved and under trial? Uh, two things. One is very clear. Okay, there is no recent approved antibiotic which works on highly resistant pseudomonas, Acinobacter, Metallobacter. The one which works on KPC and OXA-18. Uh, that is common. The other three are very unique to WCK-5222. Even where it existing works, there are re reports okay, Kazavi, which has got off patent recently and getting marketed in India, has already there are reported developed resistance against Kazavi. So from that point of view, there are no drugs in the market which comes uh, anywhere near 5222. At the same time, we don't see any drug in the clinical trial which are there in uh, covering the spectrum. The only other drug which covers the spectrum among the new drug is Shinogi drug, but it has such side effect and it has received a black box warning for usage in the U.S. Thank you, sir. We move to the next question. Vokard has reduced external debt to 600 crores. What are the total funding requirements over the next two to three years, both on CapEx and R&D? in the clinical trial space? And how do you intend to fund it? This, I think I may have answered the question. We expect about $30 million of 5 triple two CapEx we require in next to complete the clinical trial. And we are looking for external funding for that purpose, basically. And there are no CapEx required for manufacturing because 5 triple two we have de-risked it from manufacturing and we are getting it manufactured, both API and formulation, in approved FDA-approved European facility. And that is where the clinical batches are being manufactured for clinical trial. And those are the companies where we will continue to manufacture for commercial usage. Thank you, sir. The next question is particularly with respect to serum. With COVID on decline, are we confident of the 150 million dosage, dosages? See, the whole issue is serum is not looking at COVID uh, as a vaccine. They are a very broad-based vaccine manufacturer. Even before COVID was introduced, nearly 50% of world production of vaccine was done by serum. And they have such a strong dominance in the world 
any new vaccine which gets developed, uh, the serum becomes one of the very natural partners uh, for anyone to get manufactured. And they have the capacity to manufacture API vaccine. Our arrangement with them is to manufacture the formulation for them uh, in UK so that they have an access to many markets other than WHO markets. Uh, and also they get a strategic advantage of getting manufactured in UK, of getting the partnership licensing uh, arrangement. So one is not really looking at the COVID uh, extension, uh, but there are many other vaccines which are coming. They are highly valuable vaccine in terms of price and other things. And that is where the collaboration is. That is what they expect to happen. Thank you, sir. Moving to the next question. While closing your manufacturing in the USA, uh, do, are we also cutting down on our sales? Uh, I think what we have taken a call is in USA, we had a manufacturing standing cost about $25 million. What we have done is we have identified about a uh, few products which contributed to more than 80% of our top line and more than 150 to 200% of our bottom line. Because these are a high margin product and that is where we are getting it manufactured in US and Canada as a third party manufacturing product. So we have really not sacrificed too much of a sales. But at the same time, we have increased significantly our profitability of our operation in the U.S. And the uh, losses which we are incurring, that gets uh, covered. And we have, we expect that overall margin of our U.S. operation would be about 40%. Thank you, sir. That was the last question for the day. So let me just conclude uh, this uh, an investor conference, basically. I'm so happy that so many questions were asked and we had an opportunity to clarify. Uh, Dr. Mutuza has, our managing director has given you a very clear perspective of where we are today where we will be there in the next 12 months, and where we will be there in the next two to three years. And to just sum it up, I personally feel they are at the a very important point in the life of the company. And from and we are at a turning point stage. We went through a challenging times in the past, but where we are moving forward, is opportunities, opportunities and opportunities. Opportunities in biologics globally, opportunities in vaccine manufacturing with serum. We are also in discussion with another large company for uh, making their vaccines into our facilities. So that's where UK is going to become an important source of revenue and profits. And most of, equally importantly, that the, we are getting a very Happy that 4873 will be completed clinical trial and launched next year in, in, in other, other markets. Embroc is getting traction. And obviously, 5222, uh, we are seeing that clinicals will be over. And we will try to see how to monetize the value coming out of 5222. With these thoughts, thank you very much for being with us and wish you all very best. And even though it is late, I can still wish you all a great 2023. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, we wish uh, everyone a good evening. Please, uh, if you have any further questions, you can reach out uh, to the investor relation team at uh, WorkHard or at Ad Factors. We would be more than happy to, uh, you know, take all your questions and, you know, address each and every of your questions or email or, uh, you know, set a meeting with the management. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, I hand it over also to uh, Dr. Murzaza to uh, yes, give his closing uh, remarks.
Yeah, and I would also like to uh, uh, thank all of you for being a part of the investor conference. And as Chairman has summed it up very nicely, uh, we are looking at opportunities, opportunities, and opportunities uh, in all areas. And we are at a turning point. Uh, and uh, we hope to uh, come back to you uh, this, uh, sequentially and deliver on the performance and the results uh, that we have uh, very clearly identified uh, over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Thank you once again and a very good uh, evening to you and have a great 2023. Thank you, Dr. Mutsuda. With that, we end today's investor call. Thank you, everyone, and have a pleasant evening.